Hey guys, welcome back to Meetings of Mavery. I'm your host, Mavery, and right now we're going to be watching Doro episode 14. So, yeah, it is one week late, but I was out on business, and with everything scheduled as such, I figured, well, why not just watch it back to back with the latest episode, which is episode 15. So, that is what I'm going to do, and hopefully this will also be fun for you guys as well. And not really much has happened in the last episode anyway, so I'm not going to go through too much of a recap. Basically, Yakimaru got back on his feet, and now we learned that Dororo has a map on his back, apparently, and so I'm assuming that we're probably going to be seeing what that actually means. Or they could just go through another Monster of the Week episode, I don't know, and save that for later. But in any case, let's just find out together right now. So let's begin in 3, 2, 1, play. Do 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 Mopa Okay Wait Are these Dora's parents? Yeah Dora's dad and Father and mother. So another flashback. Oh, so the map on his back is the fortune that his parents left him? Hmm. Oh wait, it's on her mom? Are we on Dororo? So that's only half of the map then. But her mom's dead though. Eh. Alright. Let me skip this opening real quick and I'll see you guys in a second. And back. Sabame. Type of fish. Oh, they're still at the onsen? Alright. Yeah, but her mom is dead, and if it's engraved on her skin, it'll decompose. Oh, so you do remember it. Okay, I have no idea what the heck that is. This is treasure... Abandoned, gathered from various samurai. How big can it actually be? Oh, never mind. It's a story. It's a story. I don't think about the semantics too much. Oh. 
Hmm. If you have a full... Ah, I like that. When there's peace... Hmm. Right. Conflict and warfare is based on people wanting things that they don't have. Money makes the world go round. Yeah, it doesn't, but it doesn't matter if he's like that or not. Well, the, the truth of the matter is you can only have one and not the other. Eh, mm. uh, cross that bridge when you get there. Okay. So it's the monster of the week. Oh, but it's not a bad one. All right. What the heck are you? <laughs> yeah, you are just walking. <laughs> what the hell are you? At least he's not saying gnome gnome. Okay, I guess this temple has some relation with this monster. <laughs> yeah, Dora is actually a girl. Are you gonna pee on her? Oh? You again? So what are you? A spirit? Hmm. 
Oil? Oh. So somebody deliberately burned this temple? <laughs> oh, what? Okay. Oh, that's a bad <laughs> Alright. Appearances are deceiving. We shouldn't judge people on their appearances. <laughs> but you are one creepy looking dude, Sabame. Oh, there are actually other people here. A full village. Stranger and stranger. Oh, he is a lord. All right. In a rundown village like this? This must be the best food they've had ever. Like, ever. You can't see. <laughs> well, there's no such thing as a free lunch, Doro. <laughs> and Hyakimaru's like, how do I eat with this? Oh. All right, time for serious talk. Train them in warfare? No, somebody set the temple alight. Oh, 
Maybe it's this guy? Maybe you are one of the... Hmm. Very suspicious. Ho ho ho, what's gonna happen? Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> because those eyes aren't real. <sighs> so I guess his father did want to become an actual rebel and go against the lords. Get Kukoyo. All right, we're repeating scenes now. Okay. Okay, you are one ugly looking dude. Ooh. Okay. It's been a while since we've seen some action. Is it going to turn into something? Ooh. Got a ma. Oh, holy crap. So that's its child or something?
No, a butterfly. Never mind. Huh. So it looks like this is another two-parter. What is this episode? All right. Huh. Ooh. The So we continue with the next episode. All right. Uh, let me wrap this up with a quick um, with a quick after talk, and I'll see you guys in a second. Alrighty. So that was episode fourteen. Uh, as I mentioned in, at the end of the episode, I'm going to watch episode five directly after this, so I'll keep this discussion a little bit more short. Uh, first of all, let's talk about Demuro's parents, right? So again, I've already mentioned in I think episode twelve or episode thirteen when they first appeared. I'm not that entirely sympathetic with their cause and what they're trying to do. I feel like in the end, they were just still a bunch of outlaws. They chose this life, and well, I don't know. I, I'm I'm. Even though they keep on making this other dude to be the asshole who sells them out and whatnot, I can't really say I agree with his parents, I mean, her parents' actions as well. And here, okay, so fine. At least one of my complaints during that time was that even though uh, her parents, her dad, said that he wanted to, you know, um, he had this grudge against the samurai, right? He didn't really do anything with it. He still only had a ragtag group of bandits, if you will. And so it's, it seems that he is trying to amass a fortune in order to maybe raise a private army or whatnot. And so maybe he uh, unluckily died before he was able to start uh, this plan in motion. So in that case, maybe I, um, I'll give him props for that. But at the same time, though, uh, think about it. Like that—that that was during a time when um, he had lost everything. His family had lost everything. He literally only had him, himself, his wife, and Doro, his daughter. You would think that at that point you might want to go get that money and you know at least let your family live life, right? Even if it's not a wealthy life, at least not just be on the run as vagabonds or something, right? Um, Ambition is one thing, you gotta live in order to actually carry out your ambitions. Um, and so the mom as well, right? So she refused this out of, uh, out of respect for her husband and whatnot, her husband's ambition. But at the same time, like, later on we saw her, she basically starved to death. And Doro almost starved to death herself as well. So. Is that a good decision? I don't know. I mean, ambition is one thing. You still gotta care for your family, right? So that's one thing. And then another thing is, I actually really hate when um, when parents try to force their children to carry their ambition. Like, if, if this is something that they want, like in Tahomaru's case, then fine, go for it, right? But don't put that burden on children who can't really decide on anything yet, is what I'm trying to say. So I don't like that part at all. But well, whatever. Um, and just to make, you know, just to throw a prediction out there, I'm thinking that maybe this fortune or whatnot will eventually be used for the people of this land. Uh, and I say this because, you know, it's still, 
quite apparent that Doro wants to get his body back, right? But him getting his body back means that he needs to defeat these other demons, and this means that the blessings of the demons for this land will be smaller and smaller, and eventually misfortune will come down upon this land. So maybe in order to counteract that, they just spread the wealth of this hidden treasure to everyone, and so everybody is happy again, something like that. Um, I can definitely see the story going that way, but I guess that remains to be seen. Uh, beyond that, what else is there to talk about this episode? Oh, uh, in regards to the, I guess, um, the monster, right? Well, first of all, let's talk about the, I guess, the Lord, Lord uh, Sa Sabame, right? So, actually, just to give a quick, you know, reference, Saba is a type of fish, a macro, actually, and me means eyes, so his name literally means macro eyes, and so that's part of, part of the wa reason why when you see his, um, his character, he has eyes like that, right? They're literally fish eyes. So that's that. Not quite sure if, how this is relevant to the story later on, but at least that's how, you know, that's how his name come from, and that's how he is uh, portrayed. And as for the actual monster, that moth-like monster, I'm wondering if that's maybe a reference to Mothra, uh, the famous moth monster from the Godzilla series. Uh, it also uses a similar style, right? It, it can, you know, it can it can turn into to women, and uh, it's um, I mean, not turn into it's it's more feminine, right? And then also it has a lava stage and a moth stage and whatnot, so. I can kind of see the parallels there, but again, not really sure how relevant that is to the entire thing. I just thought it'd be a nice little piece of trivia. So I think that's all I want to talk about for this episode. Like I said, I'm going to directly watch episode 15 after this. So stay tuned, don't go anywhere, and I'll see you guys uh, hopefully in just a few minutes. <laughs> so, bye.